Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 1.1, which is the beginning of chapter 1 and also the beginning of our course. So in chapter 1, we're going to be talking about problem-solving techniques, rounding, and critical thinking, uh, but mainly problem-solving techniques. In 1.1, we're going to be looking at inductive and deductive reasoning, which are uh, ways to come up with conclusions. So our objectives are to understand and use inductive reasoning and understand and use deductive reasoning. Another big thing is going to be looking at whether the uh, statements that we come up with from either reasoning, whether or not they're true. And uh, if they're not true, we should be able to come up with a counterexample uh, to that statement to prove that it's false. So um, the process of uh, inductive reasoning is the process of arising, arriving at a general conclusion based on observations from specific examples. So we're going from the specific examples to the general conclusion, and we come up with this hypothesis or a conjecture. So the, the hypothesis or conjecture is the conclusion formed as the result of inductive reasoning, which may or may not be true. So you just say, hmm, I've been noticing that this thing is happening, or I've noticed these few examples of this happening. So I'm gonna come up with a hypothesis that this always will happen. Um, and then a counterexample, excuse me, counterexample is a case for which the conjecture is not true by uh, which proves the conjecture false. So um, a strong inductive argument, this is kind of a statistics argument here. This is something we'll see near the end of the course. Um, it says a random sample of 380,000 freshmen at 720, or 772 four-year colleges, 25% said they frequently came to class without completing readings or assignments. So therefore, we have a 95% probability that between 24.84 and 25.25% of all college freshmen frequently come to class unprepared. So they're making this statement from um, specific examples of 380,000 freshmen at 772 four-year colleges. They got their sample. This is many, 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 many examples. And they're coming up with this general statement that between 24.84 and 25.25% uh, of all college freshmen, remember that's all college freshmen, not just these 380,000, frequently come to class unprepared. So this may or may not be true, but this is a, a, a strong inductive argument because it used statistics and it's from many, many examples. Here's a weak inductive argument where it comes from... Uh, not as many examples. So this says, men have difficulty expressing their feelings. That's the hypothesis or the conjecture. Here are the examples. Neither my dad nor my boyfriend ever cried in front of me. So this conclusion is just based on two observations or two examples to a general, you know, about the dad and the boyfriend to a general thing about all men. Um, the sample is not random nor large. It's just, you know, from their family. So it's hard to say th that this example is true. So, you know, if you ever... Um, a counterexample would be finding a man that you know that doesn't have any problem expressing their feelings, and then that would prove this statement wrong. Another example of inductive reasoning is looking at examples to, to come up with a pattern. So you'll be doing a, this a lot in your homework. We'd be trying to identify a pattern. Here you can see that each time the, the numbers are going up by 9, so the next number th uh, after 39 you should just add 9, and you get 48. This one, it looks like uh, at first it's going up by 9, but then it's going up by a lot more. So maybe multiplication is the pattern here. And if you notice, each number is being multiplied by 4. So um, the next number is going to be 768 times 4, which is 3072. So we're looking at examples to find a pattern to make a conjecture about what the next number in the pattern will be. This is a little bit more tricky. This is uh, uh, a pattern where you can see that the next number after the first two numbers is the sum of the previous two numbers. So they're saying here 2 is the sum of the previous two. And then 3 is the sum of the previous two numbers 1 and 2. And then 5 is the sum of the previous numbers 2 and 3. So the next number should be the sum of 21 and 13, which is 34. Deductive reasoning is the other kind of reasoning, which is the process of proving a specific conclusion from one or more general statements. So this is the opposite direction. We're going from general stuff to specific conclusion. A conclusion that is proved to be true by deductive reasoning is called a theorem. So for instance, in Scrabble, um, 
the general statement says that all proper names are prohibited in Scrabble. So Texas is a proper name, like state names and things like that, or like people's names. So therefore, the conclusion is the theorem is that Texas is prohibited in Scrabble. So we're not going to deal as much with deductive reasoning because a lot of the things in deductive reasoning, we give you the rules and, and you can use those. But a lot of times we're just going to see weakness in inductive reasoning, which is unfortunately what a lot of people use in the real world, and we want you to be ready for those weaknesses.